It's 1930. Our job is to get a letter from Chattanooga, Tennessee, all the way to Jackson, Michigan, in the shortest amount of time. Train. Yeah, train's a good idea. They're reliable. They've been around for absolutely ages. However, it's not the fastest option. Airmail? Airmail is faster. It does also come with limitations of its own. For one thing, there aren't airfields all over the country yet. There are a lot of areas that aren't covered at hmm. all. The other limitation is planes aren't going by night. It's very dangerous, and a lot of airfields don't have standardized lighting. So how are we going to get it there fast enough? I think we can rule out dirigibles. They're going to be a little slower than the airmail, I'd say. Even slower than railway travel. What about by, by water? Could we get it up the Mississippi? The Mississippi's not going to get you all the way to where you need to go. So no matter what, we're going to be using multiple forms of transport. What if we could devise a way to combine airplane and railroad travel? Running day and night and going the faster option during the day. How do we handle the handoff? Yeah, so I think the easiest thing to do is stop the train at the train station, do the old switcheroo into the airplane, then have the airplane land at the next available station and do the switch back at night. Yeah. Yeah, that would work. It would take some time, and also it's really boring. So, uh, anything else? Well, okay, so another option. Um, you know, here's the train coming down the tracks. We've got the airplane coming from above. Timing is really important here because you've got a person standing on top of the train. Harnessed in for safety? Of course. When the time is right, they just kind of... You know... Heave it right up there? Absolutely. You know, there's going to be a lot of lost letters, loose packages. Um, Can't have that. We need a way to transfer from the train to the plane without breaking contact. Yep. As fast as possible. So... I've got it. I can see my it worked! Yeah, it did. I was not expecting that, honestly. There's definitely a lot of room for error, like with a lot of the other ideas, but you get off the ground and in the air. We combined the best of both worlds. Our letter was able to get to Michigan in the shortest possible amount of time. Yeah. For 1930, that is. 1930. So did anything like this ever actually happen? Absolutely not. But in 1939, there was a successful plane to land transfer. So essentially they would have a grappling hook attached to the plane and that would be used to grab the canister of mail from the ground on its way. And then at the same time, they would drop a rubber canister of their own mail from the plane onto the airfield. That's definitely innovative. Anywhere I can learn more? In the August issue of the American Philatelist, you can learn more about this experimental service and about railroad philately and much more. <laughs>